Hello YouTube and welcome back to the Holtz Mitchell channel. Uh, I'd like to welcome all the new subscribers that have uh, found their way to the Holtz Mitchell channel and uh, hope that uh, everybody that stops in gets a little something out of it. So anyway, today is a new series or a new episode in the woodworking series. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at uh, Wood ID and we're going to start off with uh, a rather difficult one to identify, uh, to separate, and we're going to be looking at the difference between spruce and fir. Now, um, in the woods, of course, they're really easy to uh, separate and to uh, differentiate the two from one another, you know, just based on their phenotypical traits. Now, the lumber, on the other hand, is a different story. Now, under the uh, WWPA rules, the Western Wood Products Association rules, um, fir and spruce is often mixed. Um, oftentimes, also, uh, fir, or not fir, I mean spruce and lodgepole pine. Uh, because of their wood structure, the way they break, uh, the specific weights, although the spruce is somewhat lighter than the lodgepole. Now, there's several ways you can identify uh, sawn lumber or plain lumber. Uh, here we have exactly that. I'll bring you guys in a little closer uh, so we can take a, a, a good look at the different wood species. Um, I got one board that's uh, spruce and one board that's fur, and so uh, in specific uh, silver fur. So we're going to take a look at that up close and in person here right shortly. Now there's several identifying features of uh, lumber or of sawn wood. One is of course the, the smell. Um, you can tell that when freshly sawn wood. Um, fur will have a slightly sour odor, um, some liken it to, to cat shit. Um, the spruce will have a, a more aromatic um, smell to it, um, aroma to it, uh, because of the volatile organic compounds that are found in the spruce. Now, heartwood, of course, is pretty much, uh, it, it's present, but it's, it's hard to differentiate uh, heartwood from sap in spruce and also fir, uh, mainly because there's really no major discoloration when the uh, compounds that are left behind in the heartwood start to oxidize or just age and then uh, turn color. So there is no real discernible difference. You can tell it usually in the fresh cut timber. Uh, you'll see where the sap starts to uh, come out of, this, uh, of the sapwood. And, and starts to congeal on the surface of the cut. And that's where you can uh, differentiate the hardwood from the sapwood. <clears throat> so, but for most of us out there in woodworking land, you know, we're confronted with um, going to like uh, Home Depot or Lowe's and we're looking for a stud or something like that. We want fir or we want spruce but not both uh, for the project at hand. And so it's going to be uh, up to this kind of method that we're going to be looking at today to differentiate the two. Um, so there's three ways you can do it. One by smell, two by color, uh, three by the characteristics of the wood itself. And so we'll take a, a, a brief look at all, all three of those. Of course, the smell, we don't have sniff, scratch and sniff vision yet, so unfortunately that one's out. But I can, you know, like I just tried to uh, illustrate to you in the fresh saw lumber, that's one way you can tell it. Now in finished plain dried lumber, again that smell is a little, is notably different, but for the average uh, rube out there, the average guy, it's hard to say, okay, I've got a spruce or now I've got a fir. The only way you can um, tell that is, again, the, the fur has a slightly kind of a sour smell to it, um, but not always. It's, again, there's, there's exceptions to every rule, and of course it depends on the f uh, species of fur as well. Um, the United States has probably one of the broader palettes of fur species. There's uh, red fur, which looks the same. It grows in California and parts of Utah. Then there's white fur. Then there's grand fur. Then there's alpine fur, which of course again is distinctly different. <clears throat> I don't have a, a, sp a specimen of that. 
And under the WWPA rules, alpine fir also gets lumped in with uh, the spruce and, and spruce fir mix. And so um, sometimes it just gets lost. Some mills, uh, when they do a run on, say, spruce or lodgepole, they try to keep it homogenous to where they don't mix them up. And those are, you know, good outfits to deal with. Of course, most of us buy our lumber through lumber yards, so it kind of gets lost in translation. So anyway, let me bring the camera around here and we'll take a good hard look at these boards. And I'll show you, of course, there's going to be some stills uh, later on uh, that show you in more detail the difference between the two. So let me bring the camera around and get started on this. Okay. So here we have our two boards. One is spruce and one is fir. So I'm going to let you take a wild guess at the first and I'll show you some characteristics of uh, some of these woods later on. Um, for right now, let's just memorize what we have here and uh, I'll kind of briefly elaborate on one of the characteristics of wood uh, like in this still shot here. Okay, in this still shot we saw that uh, the break of the wood and um, fur has a tendency to break off or snap off rather clean in, you know, and I use that term loosely because it still splinters and, and makes a, but it breaks off almost completely whereas spruce will splinter or make a very long uh, break where it uh, it breaks up into long stringy slivers and it doesn't like to separate. That's why Howard Hughes used spruce in the spruce goose um, because it was or is a very durable wood <clears throat> and has a, a high load capacity before it starts to break. Fur on the other hand is relatively weak wood although it can you know you can load it up fairly well but then it doesn't warn you when it's going to break. It's just going to snap off and break. It'll bend and bend and bend to a certain point and then it just breaks. And so that's one way you can tell. Um, we'll go through that bending and breaking process here in a minute. So here we have the sticks that you just saw in the, in the still photos. Here's the spruce. And as you can see, it just split open long and the fur it just broke right off. Now, to demonstrate this, I'll put this uh, sticker in the vise and show you how. I'm not going to tighten it down real hard. I'm just going to, just enough to hold it. So now we're going to give it some slight tension and watch to see how this breaks. Okay, we got one little pop. And see how that just breaks off clean away? So that's one way you can identify a uh, stick of wood. Now we have a knot here in this um, piece of spruce, so I'm going to clamp it to where we don't have too much of that knot as an influence. So now we're going to start pulling on the spruce. Now see how it's still attached? It hasn't broken off yet. It, this popped because of this, the cross grain in the knot. Let me try it with this other piece here and see if it uh, does any better. Uh, though I doubt it, I would need a longer piece. So here we go. I'm gonna put tension on it as you can see we got about we got zero deflection so now we got an inch two inches here we go and now it's starting to pop notice how it pops and pops and pops now we're getting a clean shear here a relatively clean shear because of the mechanical properties of the of the vise but notice it still hasn't broken off yet not until I twist and break it off does it actually separate Whereas this, it basically separated before, long before the spruce did. To show that, demonstrate that again. Let's 
See how that just breaks off clean? The spruce again, and I use clean with, you know, as a relatively loose term. The, the spruce break, as you can see, uh, longer slivers, the, the fur, it's more or less just a, a clean break. Again, relatively speaking. So now back to our boards. Um, if you haven't guessed by now, um, for those of you who know, by all means, do put it in the comment section below, uh, you know, um, as you're watching this. Um, so let's take another look. Now we can identify uh, some wood species on account of the knots. Now I got one here with a slightly bigger knot. Um, unfortunately, it too, these look almost the same, so it's, it's really tough to discern. There's uh, structures in the rings that we can take a look at. So let's take a, a closer look here. Now, this one here has a slightly bluish hue to it, whereas this is a more of a tannish. Uh, in the old, or in the, um, oh, what do you call it? Nah. I want to say old growth part, but that's not it. The other thing is, now this is, uh, I, I'll tell you this what this is later on, but this is the way they grow it here in Europe. Um, they grow these stands, uh, this, this particular species, rather densely in order to get a fine grain uh, in the early growth years of the stand. And then as it's thinned out, of course, then the tree releases and then you see some expansion, expansion in the growth. So somewhere along in here, the stand was, was uh, thinned out, it released, and it continued to grow until it, it you know, come back into competition. And then uh, we'll see again another thinning with uh, a slight increase in growth rings. Um, the late wood, that's what I'm looking for, sorry. And so this species here just generally grows like a weed anyway, which it is considered in forestry terms, so that way you can kind of see as it matured, it started out growth, you know, with exponential growth, and then as the tree matured and, and the crown formed, uh, it limited its growth and then just appeared to have slowed down. So um, I cover that in, in my random lengths uh, video, uh, why tree rings get or why trees seem to slow down in, in when they, as they age. But um, anyway, that's one way you can kind of tell the two uh, from each other. Again, you know, you got to get it under the right light. You'll see a slightly bluish hue in the late wood, whereas the late wood in this is a little more brownish. So now to the knots. In some instances, you can kind of also tell by the pith. Now when you look at this one here, uh, you can see a pith in the knot, and here as well, uh, in the sawn lumber, now I'm going to tell you this uh, because there is no pith here uh, uh, visible in these two uh, specimens, or this one for that matter. Uh, <clears throat> in the fur, the pith is going to be slightly bigger. Uh, it'll be uh, anywhere between uh, four to six millimeters in diameter and filled with, you know, this, this um, soft brownish stuff, the pith. And in the spruce, the pith is anywhere between one to three millimeters in diameter. So I'll put that in inches there, by the way, for those folks of you who aren't familiar with the metric system. So that's one way you can kind of follow uh, the difference. And the third characteristic in, in, the, uh, in the sawn lumber is pitch pockets. Now, for those of you who know already what we're looking at, spruce has pronounced pitch pockets throughout the board in it, whereas fir is almost completely void of any pitch pockets. You'll see one occasionally, but not very often.
So now, of course, the mystery has been unveiled again. We can see the, the hue in the, in the growth rings is slightly different. We have more brown, pronounced brown, in the growth rings of the spruce and a little, not quite as brown, uh, somewhat slightly bluish hue as you look into the, to the early wood here along the growth rings uh, in the fir. And now different fir species of course have slightly different characteristics but rule of thumb is, is pretty much the same throughout the, the genre of, of fir. So, well YouTube, I hope uh, those folks out there that are interested in wood ID and following along the channel for the wood at working aspects uh, got a little something out of this. Um, there are going to be some more of these type of uh, videos coming up. Uh, we'll probably take a look at Doug Fur and Larch in one of the upcoming videos. Um, that's just two of the species that are also uh, lumped together under the WWPA rules. Uh, of course, you know, when this wood goes into export, you know, it's already mixed, so it doesn't matter if you're in the eastern United States or Canada or wherever in the world you are, if you're getting wood from a WD WWPA certified mill, um, these are the standards that uh, are permissible, should we say, and that the, uh, that the mills follow. And so you're not getting cheated because the dynamic of the woods that are mixed together are relatively similar. You have similar colors, you have similar uh, physical characteristics, uh, physical mechanical properties, and so forth that it really doesn't justify uh, separating all these wood species. I mean, you'd have such a plethora of, of different available lumber that, uh, you know, you're not going to go walking into, into Home Depot or Lowe's and go, okay, I want some subalpine fir studs. Uh, who's going to, you know, there might be the oddball guy that does that, but, uh, you know, realistically speaking, you know, you're going to need some spruce studs or some, just some studs in general, and that's pretty much what you're going to get is a mix of alpine fir, fir, spruce, and of course, um, uh, hem fir is another so sort in the WWPA because hemlock has, again, similar um, mechanical properties as fir does, and so they lump those in together. Um, so that's kind of where we're at on that. Um, I hope uh, folks got something out of this little jaunt into Wood ID today. And uh, like I say, there's going to be more. So stay tuned for uh, upcoming episodes. And uh, if there's any thoughts, comments, critiques, suggestions, put them in the doobly-doo down below. Uh, we always love to hear from our uh, subscribers and viewers. You don't necessarily have to be a uh, subscriber to watch the videos. And, uh, but if you have a, a comment and uh, would like to partake in some of the uh, dialogue, by all means, put it in the comment section below. It's always good to, to get some feedback because without feedback, you know, you're just kind of going, hmm, what can I do different? So anyway, uh, that's a wrap for today, and uh, we'll hope to see you guys all again soon.